Hey everybody, this is Dream, and this is going to be the two-game slate on Friday for college football. It's the main slate on Friday. It's only two games. So we have U of L versus UCF, and then BSU, which is Boise State, against UNM. Uh, so we have four teams here. Um, so the Louisville UCF game right now it has a 61.5 point uh, spread as and or sorry points total, and then the uh, Boise State game has 44 points total. The UFC, UFC is favored, or sorry, UCF rather is favored by six and a half points, and then Boise State is favored by 16 and a half points. So I definitely think that the global UCF game is a d game to prioritize in this particular matchup. Uh, but there's some good players that we can utilize in all the teams. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get into the quarterbacks. Um, so my top quarterback is John uh, Rice Plumlee for UCF. In the first week, he had four touchdown passes um, and 20 for 31 with 300 yards. And U of L's defense is extremely terrible, so he's overall over the best quarterback available and has the most upside because of the plus for the negative defense that he's going to be facing. Um, my second favorite quarterback is Malik at Cunningham for Louisville. Now he had a rough week in Week One, and Louisville is not good, um, but uh, he should be able to get something going and he does have some advantage because he can get rush yards and stuff too and so i expect him to have a little bit of a better game than the 150 yards and two interceptions he had in week one however there's still some risk for the interceptions in this particular matchup um the other two uh two quarterbacks to talk about uh obviously mckinney keen is the guy for ucf i don't expect uh Oh, sorry, not UCF. What am I talking? I meant to click. Uh, sorry. Miles Kendrick. Where is he at? Sorry. Uh, Miles Kendrick is the New Mexico quarterback. Now, he's actually not a very good quarterback. He has I high INT rate, so I don't recommend using him. But I just wanted to highlight him to showcase what I thought about him overall. And then uh, the other issue we have at quarterback is that uh, Bachmeyer and... Um, uh, Taylor Green, which isn't showing up here. Hang on, let's see if I can find him. So Taylor Green, Taylor Green, excuse me, and Bachmeyer are basically uh, in a race to see who can be the top quarterback for their team. And last week they both played, and uh, Bachmeyer played terribly, and so they put Taylor Green in, and he played really well. And so it's hard to know exactly uh, which quarterback is going to start. We're probably not going to know until right before the game starts. Uh, if w Taylor Green starts, especially, I think he's somebody that could be a Hail Mary pick um, for the slate. But I can't really recommend either one because, uh, first of all, they might be in a timeshare. And if they start playing bad, then the other might come in. And so they're a little bit more risky than the three quarterbacks at the top. However, Miles Kendrick is also pretty terrible. So I think you have to kind of choose between Cunningham and Plumlee. Uh, you could even try to fit them both in at quarterback and S-Flex. Obviously the highest scoring game, so it's definitely the best two players available at quarterback. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be a little bit hard to probably fit those guys in uh, just because there's not a lot of games to get a bunch of cheaper options. But you might be able to if you work it right. Um, for running backs, uh, so we have a few good running backs here. Um, Tyon Robbins, Evans for Louisville. Uh, he has some pretty good upside here. Um, he's probably capped around 20 fantasy points, which is probably a little bit low for what we want. But uh, he does have that capacity to do that. If 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 he can, uh, you know, against bad teams, he seems to do okay. Um, so it's just like the big, the tougher teams is where he gets, he has more trouble. Um, he was at Tennessee last year, so he definitely played a lot of tough teams. And as you can see, like, against Missouri, he was really good. Uh, and he wasn't as good against Bama, Kentucky, or Tennessee. So it's just kind of like, well, how are we going to, you know, which version of him is he going to get? In his first week, he had 13 carries for 89 yards and a touchdown, which isn't bad. And I think he can do similar to that. But the danger here is if Louisville gets behind, he may not get as many touches. He's not as touch-heavy because Malik Cunningham can also run which is an advantage for Louisville. Um, but some of the other guys that I like is uh, Isaiah Browser. Let's see. For UCF, 
I feel like he has a really good shot to get it in quite a few carries here. He ran 23 carries in week one, and he's a lot safer option and a similar price range uh, to Evans. And he also does get some catches, like reception targets in the against in week one. So I expect him to continue to get some as the season progresses. Um, then the other running back for UCF is Johnny Rot- uh, Richardson. Um, he's kind of in a good situation. He's probably going to get a few rush attempts and a few attempts at the catches. He's kind of a Hail Mary option. If the if it gets out of hand and Louisville gets blown out or something, he could definitely get more touches. But uh, he's somebody that you can, you know, kind of Hail Mary if you just need to save a serious amount of money. Um, then at, at uh, for, uh, for uh, see, Boise State, excuse me, um, we have uh, George Halani. Um, now, he doesn't really run the ball, but last... Uh, but he did get 13 rushes last uh, game. But he also got some receptions. And so, uh, obviously, most people know that Boise State tends to like to throw the ball around. And obviously, Boise State's got some weirdness with their quarterbacks. But uh, a lot of their running backs tend to get receptions as well. And so I expect him to potentially get some receptions. And then the same can be true for uh, Ashton uh, Jenny, who should be playing. Um, he actually had 17 uh, yards on four carries in his first week, but he also got some um, catches. I think I believe he got uh, see six receptions in week one. So there's definitely some potential for both of those guys in this particular uh, matchup, and they're pretty inexpensive, so you can take some risks there. I wouldn't recommend any of the other guys in that position. And then finally, last but not least, uh, the UNM running back, uh, Sherrod Wright. Uh, now... He got 58 carries and two touchdowns in his first game, but that was a game where they were favored to win by a lot, and of course he helped there. This is not the same type of situation, so you have to be a little bit careful because he's a little, uh, you know, unlikely to have a game like that again. Um, so, especially in against a tougher team. Now, neither of these teams are very good, but you know, uh, Boise State is favored to win by 16 points, and it's a low-scoring game. He could still squeeze off a touchdown, but I I don't really love him. But he's somebody that you have to consider, just because of his price and stuff. You got to pay down for some players, and if you're paying up for quarterback, then you got to find some guys at the running back position and at the right receiver position that you can you know use a flex spot on or something like that. So at wide receiver, um, so there's basically two wide receivers at Louisville that I like. Um, the first is going to be uh, Tyler Hudson. Um, he had a pretty good game in the first week, eight catches for 102 yards, and he's definitely the top options for for Louisville, and so I think he has the potential to have a really good game here. Uh, even though that UCF is a pretty tough defense, he should have some uh, positive aspect here. Um, same goes for Huggins Bruce. Um, he has uh, he uh, can get four or five catches and get a decent amount of yards. He's not an t- ideal matchup though. Um, but, you know, he's somebody you can consider on Louisville. Uh, and if you're like me and you think UCF is going to have a field day here, then we actually have three different uh, guys to take a look at. Uh, one of them being Mr. Ryan O'Keefe, who uh, had three receptions for 48 yards and also a couple of rushing attempts. Now, he's not the most ideal option, uh, but uh, he's kind of due to have a really good game, and this is definitely an opportunity for him. Um, then, uh, Javon Barker, or Baker, excuse me, from, he was a Alabama, uh, wide receiver last year, and he transferred, and he ended up going to UCF, and he actually has a lot of upside. Um, in his first week, he, uh, had five attempts, or five catches for 84 yards and a touchdown. I think he can, he can really grow on that. I think he's going to be a fantastic player for UCF. He's probably my favorite wide receiver on the board. Uh, obviously, he's a little bit expensive, but uh, if you get some cheaper guys, you can definitely uh, round it out. Another guy I like is Ken Moore Gamble. He had three receptions for 82 yards and a touchdown last week, and I think that he can definitely continue to be a, a good option in this particular matchup, especially. Um, then, if we go to Boise State, uh, we have the top. We have uh, Cobbs, who's very inexpensive, um, who had four receptions for 40 yards last week. Uh, and he seems pretty safe in, a ma- in this matchup, as well as uh, Latrell Caples, who had four receptions for 25 yards. 
keep in mind that this is kind of what's, uh, you know, you're looking for home run hit, hits it when you're when you're picking wide receivers from uh, Boise State, and uh, obviously this guy's new, so he's, um, you know, he he played last year but very little, and so he's finally getting to a big impact this season, and I think he can uh, definitely uh, become a good player for them. It's just that you know, right now they're super cheap, so those are guys that you can kind of consider. Um, and then there's one guy in here that we can consider, and that is Luke Wysong. Uh, sorry for butchering your name. Um, now, he didn't have a good week in week one. Uh, or Actually, he had three receptions, 51 yards and a touchdown, and 43 rushing yards and a touchdown. Obviously, in a plus matchup for him, this isn't going to be a plus matchup, so we do have to be a little bit aware of that. But he does have some upside, and he's very inexpensive. I'm I'm gonna try to avoid rostering anybody from UNM just because of the matchup. But if there was anybody that I would potentially roster, it would be him. Obviously, they have some other guys that have some potential that I did, but they didn't really do very good in the week one. And I don't imagine that they're gonna be very good and against a tougher matchup against uh, Boise State. You know, one of the advantages of this game is that Boise State does like to throw the ball around, so. You know, White and uh, Luke Wysong will have some opportunity simply because they'll probably have more possessions than they have in a normal game. So that's pretty much what I have for this slate. It's not a big slate, obviously. There's not a whole lot to pick and choose from here. But uh, overall, it's I think it's a slate where you can, if you can mix and match the players around and get to the value just right, you can definitely take down a GPP. And so I just want to shout out the two patrons. Uh, Gerald P. and Patrick B., if you would like to join Patreon, you can check it below. Also, check the link in the description for the Discord, and have a nice day, guys.